So here is the fancy little runaround that we're going to be making use of. And it takes us back to one of the definitions from a previous video. If A is a symmetric matrix, then eigenvectors of distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal. Now, put into words, what this means is if you have two distinct eigenvalues, by distinct I mean not equal to each other, eigen, hang on, that's not how you spell eigenvalues, oh yeah, if they are distinct eigenvalues with corresponding eigenvectors, v1 and v2, then v1 is automatically orthogonal to v2. Now hopefully you'll recall that the first part of the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process is we have to make them orthogonal to each other. If this is true, then that means that we get to remove that part of the process and all that we need to do is normalize our vectors, which honestly is not so bad. Now we are going to run through the proof of this. The proof is going to make use of something that we talked about in the last video, which is that a dot product can correspond to a matrix multiplication. So these over here are column vectors, and these over here are a row matrix and a column matrix respectively. So the way that this proof goes is I am going to start with the statement lambda 1 times the quantity v1 dot v2. What I'm going to try to show is that I can make this thing equal to lambda 2 times v1 dot v2. So the way that this works is, first off, I'm going to use the associativity of scalar multiplication with the dot product and say that this is going to be equal to lambda 1 times v1 dotted with v2. That's the, again, the associativity. Now according to the definition of a, uh, an eigenvector, if I take an eigenvalue times an eigenvector, that's the same as the corresponding matrix times the corresponding, or dotted with, no, the corresponding matrix times that eigenvector, and we'll dot that with v2. So here we'll say associativity, and then here we're using the definition of the eigenvalue eigenvector problem. Eigenvector eigenvalue, ev squared, get it? That's funny, ha. Huh. Next, we're going to make use of this property up here that says when you dot two things together, it's the same as doing a matrix multiplication. So this is the same as saying matrix multiplication A V1 transpose times vector V2. And that's using the above property. Now when I apply a transpose to a matrix multiplication, I can take the transpose of those individual matrices but I have to reverse the order. So all of this is matrix multiplication in here. So that's property of transpose. Next, what I'm going to do is apply the fact that we assumed in the first case that A is a symmetric matrix, which means that a transpose would be equal to itself, or rather, matrix A. Let's say property of symmetric matrix. So I guess that's the definition of symmetric. Definition of symmetric matrix. Next, we'll use the associativity of matrix multiplication to say that this is V1 transpose times A times V2. That's associativity of matrix multiplication. Then A times V2, this is a matrix times an eigenvalue, which means that it can be replaced with the corresponding eigenvalue times the eigenvector. I said V2 was an eigenvector, right? Good. So that's, again, the definition of the eigenvector eigenvalue problem. Next, 
when we have the transpose of a vector times another vector, that's the same as saying take their dot product. So this would be v1 dotted with lambda 2 times v2. So that's again using the above property. Now at this point we're basically kind of undoing all of the things that we did having flipped a transpose back to a. And finally through the associativity of scalar multiplication with a dot product we can say that that is equal to lambda 2 times v1 dotted with v2. And again, that is associativity. Nice. Now, this doesn't actually prove anything. What I wanted to show you is that we just showed that lambda 1 times this dot product is equal to lambda 2 times this dot product. The only way that two things like this can be equal to each other is we could divide both sides by the dot product and have these two things being equal to each other. So either lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2, or it's impossible to divide by this. And the only thing that you couldn't possibly divide by is if it's equal to 0. Now with that in mind, let's take a look back at the beginning of the problem. One of the premises was if lambda 1 and lambda 2 are distinct eigenvalues. Well, if they are distinct eigenvalues, then that means that they can't be equal to each other, which means that this is impossible, which means that as long as they are distinct, it is guaranteed that they are orthogonal to each other. I think I'd like to demonstrate this property. Let's do that in the next video.